I'm going to show you how to actually convert mass into energy. E equals mc squared is probably the most famous equation in all of science, but what does it actually mean? Well, it was first derived by Albert Einstein in 1905 as part of his special theory of relativity, revealing that mass and energy are equivalent and interchangeable. Nuclear reactions convert mass to energy, but they're extremely inefficient, converting less than 1% of the original mass to energy. But there's something much more efficient, gravity. So in order to do this, we're going to do a thought experiment. I have a winch here with a special rope on it. This rope is some kind of magical rope that can't break, and it can support any force. Let's say I'm somewhere near a black hole like Sagittarius A, the black hole at the center of our galaxy. I attach this one kilogram weight to the winch and hook up my winch to a generator. So as I lower the weight into the black hole, it'll turn the generator and I can get some energy out of it. So if I let this free fall, the only thing slowing it down will be the generator. So by slowing it down, we're creating an energy source. As I lower it into the black hole, the gravity's getting stronger and stronger, so it's pulling my weight harder and harder. And the energy I'm getting out just keeps increasing. But then it starts decreasing. It's only a few millimeters away from the black hole now, but it's like my one kilogram isn't even on there anymore. I give it a quick check, and even though right next to the black hole my one kilogram should weigh trillions of newtons, I can lift up the rope as if the one kilogram weighs nothing. It's like it has no mass. What's happened here is the mass energy of the one kilogram weight has been redshifted so that from my reference frame, the mass is gone. The physical reason I feel no force on the rope that can turn my generator is because as the mass gets closer to the black hole from my reference frame, its time slows down and its space becomes increasingly compressed. And remember that force is momentum change with time and energy is force times distance. So if time is infinite and distance is zero, my force in the rope and energy extracted go to zero. So at this point, all of its mass has been converted to energy that we extracted by lowering it into the black hole. But here's an even crazier fact. Now let's say we let go of the rope so the mass falls into the black hole right above the event horizon. Well, guess what? From our reference frame, the black hole gained no mass. The one kilogram mass never went into it because we extracted its mass energy by slowly lowering it into the black hole. Now, if this sounds impossible and really theoretical to do, it's not. It happens all the time around us in the universe in something called accretion disks. Let me explain. But before we continue, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Boot.dev. If you've ever wanted to learn how to code but found it too boring or hard to stick with, this is for you. Boot.dev makes learning backend development genuinely fun. You'll get to work through real projects in Python, Go, and SQL all while earning XP, leveling up, and completing quests. I've been trying it out and it's honestly fun. You don't feel like you're learning code. You feel like you already know how to code right from the start while you debug a game. You're not just watching tutorials, you're writing real code from the start just like you would on the job. It's designed with game mechanics to keep you motivated. Plus their AI wizard bear named Boots will guide you when you get stuck using Socratic teaching to help you think through problems instead of just handing you the answers. Boot.dev is totally free to read and explore the courses in quest mode. But if you want the full experience, use my code THEACTIONLAB to get 25% off your first year by clicking the link in the description. And thanks to Boot.dev for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to our experiment. Remember the picture of the black hole that scientists recently got that wasn't so black? The brightness around the black hole is from something called the accretion disk. When matter falls into a black hole, it starts to orbit and bump into each other. So instead of free falling into the black hole, the matter bumps into other matter and slows down. This heats the matter up, and that energy radiates back into space as light and heat. In fact, in some black holes that are spinning, the accretion disk matter has lost more than 40% of its mass by radiating it as energy back into space. So the mass that actually goes into the black hole is actually 40% less than what it was originally. So accretion disks are the most efficient form of turning mass into energy in the universe, other than antimatter. But let's take a step back here and try to wrap our heads around what's actually happening. 
In this form of turning mass into energy, we aren't actually converting the object's rest mass into energy. What I mean by that is that according to someone near the black hole, our one kilogram object still has one kilogram of mass, not zero. So the difference in mass energy of the object is completely dependent on where we are relative to the black hole. So according to the black hole, it's just gained one kilogram of mass when it drops in. But according to you, far from the black hole that extracted its energy along the way, it gained no mass. But how could that be? Well, energy balances only work in flat space-time. We won't agree on the amount of energy something has if we're in different curvatures of space. And remember that gravity bends space-time, so you wouldn't agree how much mass or energy something has compared to something near the black hole. This conversion of mass into energy happens anytime you lower something into a gravity well, even on Earth. Literally any time we're using gravity to generate energy, we're technically converting its mass into energy, but only from the reference point above or below the object being lowered. However, the reason we don't think of it like that is because the mass change is so small with this weak of gravity that it's undetectable. So instead of measuring any change of mass, we just measure the energy we're getting out of something by lowering it in a gravity field. We call this energy potential energy. The only time you can get a measurable mass difference is when you're not in the same gravity field as the object that's falling into gravity, and the gravity is very strong, like near a black hole. So really, when an object falls to Earth from far away, from our reference frame, we got extra energy. We got the mass of the object, and we also got the heat energy that was caused by gravity pulling it to Earth and colliding with it. So really, when you lower anything into a gravity well, you're actually converting mass into energy from your reference frame lowering it down in. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab, and we'll see you next time.